Hey guys, what's, how's it going? Um, I've been talking, I've mentioned several times in several videos over the last few weeks about Acts 10 and Acts 11, and I did a video reading them, but I thought I'm going to do a video and read it again. Because this goes along with the previous video I uploaded, talking about um, the indwelling of the Holy Spirit and the seal that we have, and how, how it really is the instant you believe you get it. People make fun of Tim for saying nanosecond, but he's right. It is. The very second you believe, that's it. When you get it and it's in your heart, that's it. So I wanted to read through it. Now when you go into Acts 10, and there's commentary too. So when you go into Acts 10, you see Peter and Cornelius talking, and then Peter has the vision. And this is where God let down the sheet and said, Peter, kill and eat. And he was telling him, all things I've made clean, go deal with it, you know. Peter didn't want to hear it. He didn't want to do it. But God said, uh, -uh. listen to me called you for a reason. So there's commentary for this. So we're going to read 10, then the commentary, and then I'll show you in 11 where it happened again. So Peter opened his mouth, we're in verse 34, and said, truly, I understand that God shows no partiality. Interesting that that starts this part out. But in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all, you yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea, beginning from Galilee after the baptism that John proclaimed. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear. You're hearing the gospel. Not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one anointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. Did you hear what that said? This again proves what I've been telling you guys even in the Old Testament they knew about Jesus and they were proclaiming salvation through grace verse 43 to him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name believes faith and we can just consistently keep proving this in verse 44 now we have uh, 44 through 48 at the end of the chapter, and it's the, that grouping is titled, The Holy Spirit Falls on the Gentiles. So here's the first story. While Peter was still saying these things, he was giving them the gospel. The Holy Spirit fell on all who heard the word, and the believers from among the circumcised who had come with Peter were amazed because the gift of the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles. For they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people? who have received the Holy Spirit just as we have. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then they asked him to remain some day. So there's your first instance. He's giving the gospel and bam. And this is right after he had that vision. So not only did God show him, hey, here's what I want you to do, but then he led him somewhere to go do it. And, and everybody was blown away that, whoa, it landed on him. Now let's go look at the commentary. And it's, uh, commentary on Acts 10, 34 through 48. <clears> oh, <throat> Gentiles receive the Holy Spirit. The address with which Peter answered the centurion's inquiry was largely a recap recapitulation or recapitulation of the great facts of gospel history. The ministry of Jesus in the power of the Holy Spirit was probably already familiar to the, his hearers. The story of the crucifixion was equally well known. A lot of people were witness to that. That's why a lot of people keep making fun of the crucifixion, saying it wasn't real. A lot of people witness this. And I. They're going to find writings that talk about it here pretty quick if they haven't already. These things were not done in a corner. But the third division of the address in Acts 10 39 through 41, in which the apostle told of the resurrection and of our Lord's appearance to chosen witnesses, of whom he was one, was probably replete with new and startling tidings. Notice the implied invitation of Acts 10.43, which says, To him, all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. To them all to believe in Jesus for the remission of sin. 
So now you know where salvation comes from and remission of sin comes from. The Holy Spirit fell upon the audience, as on the day of Pentecost in Acts 10.44. There must have been that wonderful stirring and moving among the people, which we have beheld, in a modified form, in modern audiences, when moved by the celestial wind, as a harvest field by the breeze. Peter never finished his sermon. It seemed as if the Holy Spirit put the apostle aside, saying, Thou hast spoken enough, leave the rest to me. <laughs> That's And look, the... All we have to do, and I've, I've, guys, the confirmations, I just watched a couple of other people's videos, David and Chelsea Bedell, and confirmation, 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 not about being right and wrong, and this confirms that too. It seemed as if the Holy Spirit put the apostle aside saying, thou hast spoken enough, leave the rest to me. All we have to do is step out in faith, and he will do everything else, right or wrong. If you make a mistake, own up to it, admit it, confess it, and then move on. Let the Holy Spirit deal with it. We are not to be judging ourselves. I'm my own worst critic. I look down on myself. But this year, that's changed. I now, I look at it and go, well, that was a mess up. And I keep on rocking and don't even worry about it. I, I want to move out in the middle of nowhere and be away from everybody. I don't want to be around people. The Holy Spirit keeps me here. And this is the reason. It's not about, it's being used as an example. It's not about being right or wrong. It's about doing what the Holy Spirit is prompting you to do. Those who are led by the Spirit, no law governs them. Walk in faith. All right, let's go to 11. And here he has, here he is reporting to the church and he's telling them about the vision that he had. Down here? I think it's down here. Let's see. Must be up here. Yeah, it's up here. Okay. So Peter reports to the church in Acts 11, verse 1, Now the apostles and the brothers who were throughout Judea heard that the Gentiles also had received the word of God. So when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcision party criticized him, saying, Now look at what happens here. There's several stories going on. You went to uncircumcised men and ate with them. But Peter began and explained it to them in order. I was in the city of Joppa praying, and in a trance I saw a vision, something like a great sheet descending. So they're trying to call him out, but he's correcting them. Being let down from heaven by its four corners, and it came down to me. Looking at it closely, I observed animals and beasts of prey, and reptiles, and birds of the air. And I heard a voice saying to me, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. But I said, By no means, Lord, for nothing common or unclean has ever entered my mouth. But the voice answered a second time from heaven, What God has made clean, do not call common. This happened three times, and all was drawn up again into heaven. And behold, at that very moment, this is while he's telling the story, three men arrived at the house in which we were, sent to me from Caesarea, and the Spirit told them, told me to go with them, making no distinction. These six brothers also accompanied me, and we entered the man's house. Now here's the second story. And he told us how he had seen the angel stand in the house and say, Send to Joppa and bring Simon, who is called Peter. He will declare to you a message by which you will be saved, you and all your household. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell on them just as on us at the beginning. And I remembered the word of the Lord, how he said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then, then God gave the same gift to them as he gave to us when we believed in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I that I could stand in God's way? When they heard these things, they fell silent, and they glorified God, saying, Then to the Gentiles also God has granted repentance that leads to life. And then it goes on to talk about persecution and stuff like that. So, the commentary associated with this one. Following a plain course. It is very interesting here to find Peter on the defensive. We have always thought of him as masterful and strong, the born leader of men, whose authority was absolutely indisputable. But here we see him taken, taken seriously to task by the mother church and compelled to show the grounds of his unprecedented action. Because you remember what he used to do, and Paul called him out. He also appears the first clear indication of the rift which was in due course to develop in the church. Between the converted Jews, who insisted that Gentiles must become Jews before becoming Christians, sound familiar? Follow the Torah, live under the law. 
and those of more liberal views, who began to understand that in Christ Jesus neither circumcision nor uncircumcision availed anything, but a new creature, Galatians 6.15, and faith working by love, Galatians 5.6. This division was the cause of Paul's embitterment and a lifelong persecution. But the first decision of those in the church in Jerusalem was a perfectly just one, Acts 11.18. The facts compelled a favorable verdict upon Peter's action. They tactfully or tactically confessed that the seal of God's approval has been unmistakably affixed to his action and that he had no alternative. When a man lives in union with the Spirit of God, crooked things become straight and rough places plain. Isaiah 40 and 4. And I think I was actually mistaken. He is just recounting the story that happened. Uh... Yeah, I think, he, I think he was just recounting that story. I thought there was two different stories here. Yeah, it looks like it. Okay, so down here he's talking about how in Antioch, where they were first called Christians. So anyway, that's Acts 10 and Acts 11. And you see quite clearly, it was the instant they believed that everything changed. The very instant, the very second that they believed, the Holy Spirit fell right on them. And it starts right here in, in uh, Acts 10.34. So, go read this for yourself. Read it in your Bible. It's, it's too clear to understand what the intent was. It's too clear to understand, oh, Jesus loves pancake, just did a video, finally. Um, it's too clear to understand what he was referring to, what he was getting at, and the point that he was trying to make. God, if I created a way for everyone to go, don't deny anyone. And when we look at the, all the other belief systems out there, there's denial, there's condemnation, there's you got to be good enough. And even then, in some of them, only if the governing authority in that religion has mercy on you, even if you're good enough. And we're the only religion that has a Messiah. We're the only religion that has freedom to salvation. Or freedom because of salvation. But it's free to anybody. Anybody can be saved. And no one has any right to lay any stipulations on it. No one has any right to put any governing factor on it when God didn't. So, and there's more to read in Acts. Acts is a great book. It helps you understand a lot of the things that were going on at, at the very beginning of the church and how things were laid out. I highly recommend a, a full study on the book of Acts. And maybe I'll do a playlist on it. I don't know yet. Right now I want to get the Romans one done because it's been bugging me. <laughs> so anyway, guys, go read that for yourself, Acts 10 and 11. You'll see very clearly what God was trying to prove. And you'll see how Peter, af after he had had it out, uh, how... They realized this is God working, and they fully accepted it and rolled on with it. I love you guys. Bless you all in Jesus' name, and I'll see you in the next one.